This is a story about a Jacksonville mother and her boyfriend. Can somebody in the chat please tell me? Out of 2019, we've had almost 12 months of this. How many stories can you guys tell me that I've done about the dynamic mother and boyfriend and dead children? Hmm? Can any, anybody want to take a guess about that? Because if you ask me, I know my brother Jason Gunn asked me to give you guys an actual number. I can't scroll back and count all of the stories that I've done just this year alone. Like it's probably been like 10 a month, maybe even more. It could have been a couple hundred. I have no idea. It's way too many. And I'm gonna tell you guys something. I don't know if y'all know about this. This is the thing that makes this story unique that I thought was really, really different. I found this story by way of a website. Y'all wanna know what the website is? The website is called momsboyfriend.com. Mm-hmm. Did y'all hear what I just said? Do y'all even believe what I just said? <laughs> there is a website dedicated to this very thing that I've been talking about on this channel pretty much since I got my start. Momsboyfriend.com is a website that is dedicated, like a lot of people, they dedicate their time to highlighting these stories and highlighting this dynamic, which is destructive to children. Don't believe me? Look it up after the stream is over. We'll talk about that later. They're out of Jacksonville, right there. Michelle Cannamore and Jonte Harris, the mother and boyfriend. They are arrested for the death of the five-year-old girl that you saw, Zykeria Robinson, and the mother, <coughs> excuse me, the mother has already pleaded guilty to aggravated manslaughter of the child. Again, her name is Michelle Cannamore. She is 26 years old and she's scheduled for sentencing on January the 14th, which is right around the corner. And I can't wait to see how many years they give her. Give her the chair, give her life. I don't care what you give her. But this little girl was murdered back in October of 2018. But all of the sentencing and all of the trial and all of that stuff is actually happening right now. No, Miss Pamela, I am not joking. Not at all joking. Police said that they found the little girl unresponsive from multiple injuries while in the care of her mother and her mother's boyfriend on the right hand side, Jonte Harris, J-O-N-T-E. So you don't mistake who he is. An arrest report said that the mother admitted Harris had abused the girl since August and had repeatedly hit her until she became unconscious. This is also why I stress that we should not physically discipline children. Can somebody type that in the chat for me? Yes, this is another situation. That's why we have the BBB, the triple B's emoji, which is Big Belly Bowens out of Houston, Texas. Y'all know that I hate that woman with a passion and she should be in jail for life for what she did to her daughter, right? This same thing that I talk about all the time, Keep your hands, feet, and other objects to yourself. There is absolutely no need to physically discipline a child. If you have to physically discipline a child, then you are failing as a parent. All of the work comes up here, not in here. Everybody catch that? I know we got some really good hashtags here in this channel. All of the work comes here, not here. You don't have to hit kids at all. There's no reason for it. And I used to think, well, maybe some spanking is warranted. Nope, I'm off that. Completely off that. Stop hitting kids, period, okay? Harris, Jante, was indicted for his first degree murder and is awaiting trial. If convicted, they'll actually give the man the death penalty. But it's funny how the mom put this child in this position. Now, why isn't she facing something like the death penalty. Now, Jonte Dominique Harris and Michelle Lynn Cannamore, both 26 years old, are currently in the Duval County Jail charged with child abuse in Cannamore and aggravated battery on a child using a deadly weapon, Harris. 
Five-year-old Zakaria Robinson was found unresponsive and unconscious in a Jacksonville home. So I'm going to warn you guys, if you guys are listening to this stream, I'm about to give some details about this story, about what happened to this little girl. It's going to be difficult to absorb. So if you cannot handle that, I ask that you exit the channel. For everybody else that wants to support what we do here, and at least we can talk about what happened to this child, then I ask you guys to just click the thumbs up and share the stream. Let other people know that we're live, but I'm about to get into some details. So I'm just forewarning you. That was your forewarning. Here we go. The officer wrote that the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office responded to the couple's home due to the victim being found unresponsive and unconscious in the home. That beautiful little girl right there. And you look at that face and you ask yourself, what did she do to them that was that wrong? Looks like a happy, smiling, healthy young baby, five years old. Kenmore informed detectives that she sent the victim, the baby, to the bathroom after she wet herself. She had a potty training accident. It happens. If human beings, adults, cannot handle the fact that children are going to have bathroom accidents on themselves or in certain situations, then they should not be parents if they can't understand that that's normal for a child. They have to learn. You got to be diligent about teaching them, but they have to learn. And I've asked you guys to please click the thumbs up. How do we have almost 170 people watching, but only 93 thumbs up? Please, y'all don't even have to hear me to continue to keep saying that. If you'll just say, oh crap, Jay, I haven't hit the thumbs up. Boom, there we go. I know y'all think it don't make a difference, but it actually does. Please click the thumbs up. Thank you, Megan, for letting me know. Now, a short time later, she heard a thud in the bathroom. She went in to check on the little girl and she found her unresponsive in the bathtub face down in the water. The mother, Cannamore, called 911 and the victim, the little girl, was transported to the hospital by Jackson, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department or JFRD with life-threatening injuries. According to the arrest report, John Tay Harris admitted the previous story about the victim falling in the bathtub was a lie and it was fabricated to protect him. So again, they blamed all of this on the little girl. Matter of fact, how many of y'all want to actually see the police interview where they said that the little girl injured herself? Y'all want to actually hear them say it on camera? Because I have it. I'll show it to you. Let me read the rest of this real quick. The child was left on the couch for hours because the suspects were worried about the legal and criminal repercussions. Wow. They care more about themselves than they do their children. That's why I believe in the biological father, the, uh, the nuclear family, biological mother and father, being able to be in these kids' lives and raise them. If they're not going to be together, then they don't need to be having the kids, okay? Because these type of dudes continue to prove to you that they're not going to treat these kids like they would their own. Okay. The arrest report also said that the victim had multiple injuries throughout her body in multiple stages of healing, including human adult bite marks. Human adult bite marks. Where is the logic in so-called disciplining children by biting them, by sitting on them, by slamming them, by taking foreign objects and hitting them across the head with it? Like what? Y'all hear this? Including human uh, adult bite marks. He bit this child not only once, but a bunch of times, which is indicative of long-term abuse. <clears throat> DCF said in a statement that the child had died and the family had a history with the child welfare system, but they kept the kid in the mom's possession, even though she had a history. Keep in mind, take a pen, bookmark that, we'll come back to it. One month prior to Robinson's death, 
DCF claimed that they did not find any form of abuse against the child. Now, this is why they're getting ready to sue. The grandparents are getting ready to sue DCF and rightfully so because they said, well, we didn't find anything. How did you not find a bunch of bite marks, scrapes, bruises on this five-year-old girl? How do you miss that? If you are missing that as a DCF worker, then all y'all need to be fired and all y'all need to be sued. As a matter of fact, DCF might need to do some fucking time in jail, in my opinion. How many of y'all agree with that? Now, neighbors said that they feared the abuse in the home and may have believed and, and believed that they heard screams coming from the apartment. But keep in mind, so just so you guys know, I believe that the neighbors actually did call the police. That's how a lot of this stuff had started happening. I would hear, let me see, excuse me. I would hear that and I was like, what's going on? A neighbor said, DCF stated that they're processing further requests for the family's prior involvement records. <clears throat> Robinson's grandfather, Henry Doyle, says he believed DCF could have done more to protect Robinson. And during a press conference, Robinson's grandparents said that they hired legal aid to take custody of the child last summer, months before her death. So the grandparents tried to come in and save this kid and this ungrateful chick right here, cause y'all know I wanna cuss and I wanna say some horrible things about her. I'm gonna do my best not to. The grandparents tried to take custody of her and she said, nope, I'm gonna keep this kid with me. And one would have to ask, why would she go through all of that knowing that the grandparents were trying to take custody of this kid? Why would she go through all of that? What is that called? Hashtag babies for benefits. Michelle Cannamore did not want to lose probably the child support and welfare benefits from this child. That's why she did not give the child up to the grandparents, knowing that the grandparents wanted to take care of the kid. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people that don't want to be parents would gladly give their kids over to a grandparent that will raise the kids for them. But she didn't because it was, it was monetary. She only wanted to keep the benefits, okay? They have since adopted Robinson's sister, so apparently there were two kids involved. We're not gonna put the other kid's name or face out there, but because this baby is posthumous, doesn't matter putting her face out there. We don't ever wanna hear about anyone else harming our grandkids again, Doyle said, who was the grandparent. You do a child like that, the death penalty should come into play. Zakaria, uh, Zakaria's grandfather, Henry, Henry Doyle said, and I agree. They didn't know that they were sending them back to hell, Doyle said. And they said that the mother didn't stop bringing their grandchildren over and would not let them visit. Um, okay, mom's fur baby said she sent something through, so I might need to log out and see what happened. Let me see, do I, do I see your PayPal? I do not. Mom's fur babies, I do not. I know you normally, yours will normally show right up. Make sure that you guys click the, uh, the, the, uh, the link in the description box, okay? Because if you click it there, then it should show up here. But I don't see it yet. But let, let me know. I'll continue to keep checking it. All right, here we go. That's when they said they reached out to a lawyer to try to get custody. But before they could do that and begin that process, this little girl was already dead. Let me see. The news said that ex, uh, safety expert Dale Carson, Carson said that there needs to be proof of abuse to launch an investigation. You have to have some way of describing what's going on in a way that would cause investigators to believe you're credible but there are ways to seek custody. And for relatives who believe something is happening, Carson said that there are, there are steps to take. You can call the Department of Children and Family Services. You do, you do that anonymously. And then you can call law enforcement if there are any indicators of child abuse. Then you hire a lawyer who deals in child custody matters, Carson said. Let me go ahead and show you guys this video. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Let me give you guys the fair usage real quick. Let's get it.
Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Hashtag, where is the biological father? I would absolutely want to know. Thank you for, for posting that, uh, Lady Foots. I damn sure would like to know. The Action News Jacks obtained new interrogation videos that reveal disturbing details about the death of a five-year-old. Now, we first told you last October when Zakira Robinson died. Her mother and mother's boyfriend were charged with murder. Tonight, Action News Jacks' Brittany Verner is live on the west side where the initial incident happened. And Brittany, the suspects say the child gave herself all the wounds on her own body. Y'all heard that they tried to blame this on the kid and said the kid beat herself up. Listen again. Suspects say the child gave herself all the wounds on her own body. On the west side where the initial incident happened in Brittany, the suspects say the child gave herself all the wounds on her own body. It happened in Brittany, the suspects say the child gave herself all the wounds on her own body. This is the apartment complex where investigators say that little girl was abused. During an interview, police asked both suspects about bruises on the young girl's body, and both of them tried to justify it, saying those wounds were self-inflicted. Friday, police released video of them questioning Michelle Canamore and Jonte Harris about the death of five-year-old Zykeria Robinson. She was Canamore's daughter. She died last October after suffering severe head trauma, but an investigation shows she had bruises all over her body that were in different stages of healing. And when police asked Canamore and Harris about the marks, they told investigators the five-year-old caused them herself. What about the, the marks on her eyes, the black eyes? Nine, ten, hitting the wall. She does that. Cannamore and Harris said their family would go for a run every night, and since Zykeria didn't like it, she would often throw a fit. She likes to fall down and likes to cry and throw a temper tantrum. Pick her up. She started running again. She started running again. Then she slid. That's how she got her bruises. Investigators say the five-year-old had bite marks all over her body. She also had a bruise on her head. She's like falling to the wall. Yes. They are both charged with murder and aggravated child abuse. We spoke with Kathy Swafford, who's an advocate for child abuse victims, and she's now in close contact with the family who also adopted Zykeria's sister. It was obviously beatings. She says the child's grandparents tried to get help. They've contacted DCF to try to get well checks done on the kids. But their efforts were unsuccessful, and as a result, Zykeria's life was taken. Could this have been prevented? No child should ever die the way she did. I agree with Lady Foots. That was exactly what I was getting ready to say. As big as that woman is, they, they talking about they go out for a jog every night. I'm going to let y'all hear this again. We got just over 200 people here. I'm going to rewind this so y'all can hear this interrogation again. And I want y'all to hear that they blamed all of this on the little girl. I don't know if maybe I didn't have the volume turned up. Maybe y'all didn't hear it. But I'm going to play this again without me interrupting. And I want y'all to hear that they blamed all of this on the five-year-old little girl. She beat herself up. She put these bite marks on herself. She would slam her head into the wall. And when they would go out jogging, and who believes that this fat woman was out jogging every night? I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. But she said when she would go out jogging, she would fall on purpose and drag her arms across the, the concrete. Listen at this again. This is the stupidest stuff I've ever heard. All the wounds on her own body. This is the apartment complex where investigators say that little girl was abused. During an interview, police asked both suspects about bruises on the young girl's body, and both of them tried to justify it, saying those wounds were self-inflicted. Friday, police released video of them questioning Michelle Canamore and Jonte Harris about the death of five-year-old Zykeria Robinson. She was Canamore's daughter. She died last October after suffering severe head trauma, but an investigation shows she had bruises all over her body that were in different stages of healing. And when police asked Canamore and Harris about the marks, they told investigators the five-year-old caused them herself. The five-year-old girl caused the injuries to herself. 
I want y'all to listen to how they explain this. What about the, the marks on her eyes, the black eyes? Nine, ten, hitting the wall. She does that. Cannamore and Harris said their family would go for a run every night, and since Zykeria didn't like it, she would often throw a fit. She likes to fall down and likes to cry and throw a temper tantrum. Pick her up. She start running again. She start running again. Which she sleep. That's how she got her bruises. Investigators say the five-year-old had bite. The five-year-old had bite severe head trauma, but an investigation shows she had bruises all over her body that were in different stages of healing. And when police asked Cannamore and Harris about the marks, they told investigators the five-year-old caused them herself. What about the, the marks on her eyes, the black eyes? 9 10 hitting the wall. She does that. Cannamore and Harris said their family would go for a run every night, and since Zykeria didn't like it, she would often throw a fit. She likes to fall down and likes to cry and throw a temper tantrum. Pick her up. She start running again, she start running again, then she sleep. That's how she got her bruises. Investigators say the five-year-old had bite marks all over her body. She also had a bruise on her head. She's like falling to the wall. Yes. They are both charged with murder and aggravated child abuse. We spoke with Kathy Swafford, who's an advocate for child abuse victims, and she's now in close contact with the family who also adopted Zykeria's sister. It was obviously beatings. She says the child's grandparents tried to get help. They've contacted DCF to try to get well checks done on the kids. But their efforts were unsuccessful, and as a result, Zykeria's life was taken. Could this have been prevented? No child should ever die the way she did. And they are hoping both people are thoroughly punished for this gruesome crime. Apparently somebody in the chat reads body language and they are correct. Black Superwoman said arms crossed means you're being defensive. And yes, that is correct. You're blocking energy. This is blocking energy. You're not being receptive. This is non-receptive body language. Look up body language on YouTube. Like, and I think the FBI teaches a really, really good short course on different forms of body language. So you're 100% correct. They also asked in the chat said, was she sexually assaulted? <clears throat> we don't know. We don't know. They didn't say anything like that. So I'm not exactly sure, but they said that this little girl had bite marks all over her body. So what does that mean? I don't know. A tragic story. Police confirming a five-year-old girl died Friday hours after she was found unresponsive with multiple injuries. Tonight, neighbors are in disbelief. Talk to your babies. Make sure you know you have the right people around your kids. According to the Department of Children and Families, Zykeria Robinson was in the care of her mother and her mother's boyfriend. And Michelle Cannamore and Jonte Harris are now both charged with child abuse and neglect. According to a police report, the mother said that Wednesday, Harris hit Robinson over and over until she passed out. At that point, the report says Cannamore went to work and left her daughter on the couch. Investigators say Robinson's six-year-old sister saw the abuse. New Family, neighbors, friends, everyone is just so upset by the loss of this sweet little girl. They say they loved her so much. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says this five-year-old girl, Zakaria Robinson, was beaten to death by her mother's boyfriend. Her mother, Michelle Cannamore, faces charges of child abuse and child neglect. The boyfriend, John Tay Harris, is charged with aggravated child abuse. This is after the five-year-old was found unresponsive after police say that Harris beat her over the head over and over again on Wednesday night. Cannamore did not call police until about seven hours later. Once, she says Zakaria stopped breathing. Police report says Cannon Moore was afraid to call police and feared DCF would take her daughters from her. Zakaria's aunt spoke with me via text about Zakaria, saying she was the sweetest little girl there was and her sister. She would come over and play with my kids who were their cousins. They would go to Nana's house and play all the time. They loved each other. We're also learning more about Zakaria's father's side of the family. Her father is this man, Zafar Robinson. The same man News for Jax did a story. So there we go. There's the biological father right there. I didn't catch his name. Let me see if they'll say his name again. They all the time. They loved each other. We're also learning more about Zakaria's father's side of the family. Her father is this man, Zafar Robinson. Zafar Robinson? Zafar or Safar? At least we see his face. If he's listening to the biological father, if he happens to listen to the story, I've had a couple of fathers actually do, uh, they did email me. So I do appreciate y'all doing that. I will 
As soon as I get a chance to sit and do these, I will email y'all back. But if this father uh, watches this stream, then please shoot me an email because I would love to hear your side of the story about what actually happened. How did, how did she end up in this situation and what your role was with regard to being a father in her life? I would absolutely love to hear your story. Each other. We're also learning more about Zakaria's father's side of the family. Her father is this man, Zafar Robinson. The same man, News for Jax, did a story about this time last year when he was shot in the head but survived. A neighbor tells us that Robinson's family wanted custody of Zakaria and her sister. I reached out to the Robinson family but have not heard anything back at this point. There will be a vigil, though, for Zakaria happening at the home where she died at 7 p.m. on Friday. All right, guys, let's go ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. In that video that I showed, the police questioning Canna Moore and Harris about the death of Zakaria, and investigators said that she died after suffering severe head trauma. Now, during the investigation, however, evidence showed that she had bruises all over her body that were in different stages of healing. So DCF, I think for that lie, should absolutely be sued by the grandparents. When police asked Cannamore and Harris about the marks, they said the five-year-old little girl caused them herself. The detective said, well, what about the marks on her eyes, the black eyes? The mother said, hitting the wall nine out of, or excuse me, hitting the wall nine out of 10 times, hitting the wall. She does that. That's the mother who said that. Uh, Black Hebrew Israelite says there a GoFundMe page. There was a GoFundMe page. And I think there might've been two of them because I even have a screenshot. Let me see if I can get to it real quick. But I wasn't able to find it. it the, the GoFundMe pages were taken down. That's one of them right there. I cannot see who actually created that GoFundMe page. But there you go, brother. Let me back that up one more time so you can see that. Let me know if you can see that on my screen. There was a GoFundMe page, and I think there might have been two of them. She said nine out of ten times, she hit the wall. She does that. What five-year-old takes her head and bashes it against a wall? No five-year-old does that. Now, Cannamore and Harris, these two fools right there, said that their family would go for a run every night, even though she's fat as hell. Why would she go running? Which clearly shows that she's lying because you can see it in her flubber that she don't run or exercise. All she do is eat, especially with her being 26 years old. There's no reason for you to be that damn fat and be 26 years old. Sorry, I'm almost 40. I have an excuse. <laughs> you can't be in your 20s and be that damn big talking about you go exercise and no you don't no you don't they said that their family would go for a run every night and since the five-year-old girl Zakiria didn't like it she would often throw a fit she likes to fall down and like to cry and throw a temper tantrum the mother said she slid that's how she got the bruises Harris said that's Jonte Harris the boyfriend the investigation showed that the five-year-old had adult bite marks all over her body. She also had a bruise on her head. Cannamore said that those wounds were self-inflicted. The mother said that. I don't understand how you can carry a kid for nine months, give birth to a kid and see that beautiful little girl and you're just like, I'm gonna treat her like shit. I don't understand it. I will never understand it and it's not fair. Kathy Swafford is an advocate against child abuse, and she's now in close contact with the family, who is the grandparents who adopted Zakaria's uh, sister. She said the, grand, uh, uh, the child's grandparents tried to get her help, but their efforts were unsuccessful. As a result, Zakaria's life was taken. It's obvious, it was obviously beatings. They, the grandparents, contacted DCF to try to get welfare checks on the kids. This could have been prevented and no child should ever die the way that she did, Swafford said. Zakaria's grandparents recently announced that they plan to sue the Department of Children and Family Services, saying the department knew there was a history of abuse and they failed to act. Let me say this 
If anybody knows who the grandparents are, if you know how to directly contact them, I'm not asking you guys to contact them, but if y'all actually know them, if you're actually acquaintances of them, if they need any help from us, we'll be more than happy to provide some type of resources, whether it be information or something, whatever you need from us, please let us know. I'd be more than happy to try to make sure that you guys have all the tools that you need. Mainly, we're really, really good for information, okay? But I would love to make sure that they have everything that they need. Because especially with being grandparents, sometimes they get a little bit older. They're not as quick and maybe not even as, sav as tech savvy as we are. So I'd be more than happy to help in any shape, form, and fashion that we can to try to get justice for Zykeria Robinson. I call her a baby. She was five years old. I would always remember what it was like when my daughter was five years old. One of the most precious times in her life was when my daughter was two years old and five years old. I love children at that age. Once they start walking and talking, I love children deeply. Like that is still why me and my daughter, even though she almost look at me eye to eye, she's a big girl now, but I still treat her like she is my little baby. Like I hug her and I love her and I talk to her. I love to hear her thoughts. You know, I, I just like to hear her talk. I like to hear her reasoning, her rationale. I like the fact that she does a great job at school. And I like to thank not only her mom for choosing me <clears throat> as a father, because like I said, I actually did want to be a father. But I think it's sad that when we have so many options in this world, and now we even have a male birth control pill. We have male birth control methods to be able to prevent children that we do not want to have. Mothers have always had all kinds of ways to prevent pregnancies if they don't want these kids, which means Michelle Cannamore ignored every option that she had on the table, which proved that she was just flat out irresponsible as a human being, period. Not even as an adult, but she was unresponsible as a human being. But now men have absolutely no excuse to be irresponsible. We have to start being more responsible in the United States of America. Okay, you guys understand that? Men and women need to stand up and take responsibility for our own actions. These children did not ask to come into this world. They cannot speak for themselves. They cannot defend themselves. If you choose to be a single mother, then you absolutely have to take the mantle of responsibility and put it on yourself and say that I need to do, I need to do, I, me, I need to do what is best for my child in the best interest of my child and stop pointing the finger. Stop pointing the finger at everybody else. Point the finger at yourself and say, what can I have done to do better by my child. You cannot control what the other biological parent is going to do, but you can control who you're going to have your child around, what you're going to feed your child, how you treat your child, and how the, the, and, and the environment that you raise your child in. All of those things are things that you have control over. There is no excuse to beat children, and that shit has to stop. Let me give a shout out again to the website, momsboyfriend.com. I have no idea who created that website. I have no idea why they created that website, but I want to give them a thumbs up, a prayer hand, and a huge shout out for even creating the website. M-O-M-S-B-O-Y-F-R-E, excuse me, F-R-I-E-N-D.com, momsboyfriend.com. Y'all can look that up after the stream is over. And they focus not, not on black couples, white couples, any couples, any moms who have boyfriends and boyfriends and the mom abuse the children and kill the children. That is what their website is focused on. They even have an archive where you can go month by month and year by year and find out who did what. They don't have them all, but they have a lot of them. This is one of the stories that was in that website. And I admire people who call this type of thing out because it takes a group effort. We can't just have the AFC. The grandparents 
act as the AFC. You people in the chat, as y'all being neighbors and family and friends, you guys act as the AFC. DCF, DCS, or whatever it is, act as the AFC. Police act as the AFC. All of us are the AFC. And we all need to be advocates, the AFC, advocates for children first. This baby could not speak. Let me get these people off my screen for a curse because I'm about to say something really, really horrible. This baby could not speak for herself. She could not defend herself. There was absolutely nothing she could do to defend herself against the tyranny of those who were her caretakers. She stood a better chance of being in the father's custody and she stood an even better chance of being in the grandparents' custody. They robbed the grandparents of an opportunity to be in this little girl's life and to take care of her. Now they have her six-year-old sister and I hope that they do right by her and I hope that that little girl raises up and, and becomes something great. They robbed this little girl of an opportunity. She could have been anything. She could have been somebody that changed the world. She could have been a major contributor. And that hurts my heart. The fact that we won't even give children an opportunity. We won't even try. Zakaria Robinson, five years old, young princess, RIP, rest well. You no longer have to go through any suffering on this horrible, horrible earth. Everything that you went through, you did not deserve what you got. And I love your beautiful smile. And I wish we could have seen you grow up to become something great. This is your boy, DJ Just J. That's why we're the AFC. We advocate for children first. I love you guys from my heart to yours. Thank you guys so much. Y'all have a great night.